Today I'm having a chat with Henry Lien, the author of speculative fiction for adults, as well as these two marvelous middle grade novels, Pea Sprout Chen, Future Legend of Skate and Sword, and the sequel, Pea Sprout Chen, Battle of Champions. Henry is one of the most vibrantly imaginative and compassionate writers I know, and so I feel so lucky that we're friends and that we got to have this chat in person. Hey everybody, I'm here with my dear friend Henry Lien, and we're just chatting about how much we love being vegan. <laughs> here we are in LA, we had a wonderful Japanese lunch, and we're just having a chat. Um, yeah, I'm be asking, asking about my being vegan, it's like asking uh, how, how do I like being male and how do I like being Taiwanese and all the other things that are really such core parts of my identity. But here's the difference, and I've had all of uh, 90 seconds to think about this answer. The difference is that all of those other things that I just mentioned, being male, being an immigrant, being Taiwanese, they are complicated for me. They are um, they're complex, and um, there are good things and bad things about being male. Um, there are easy things and hard things about being gay. All of those things that make up my identity are complex. Being vegan is not complex mm. for me. It is 110% good. It is the one thing I can think of in my life that is wholly good. Mm. Um, it's good for my, um, it, it's, it's good for my health. It's good for my body. It's good for the world I live in. It's good for my soul. And it is the one thing I can think of in my life right now that brings me so much joy and, and peace consistently. There is never any struggle with it. There is never any inner conflict. There's never any complexity about it. It is just a light in my life. And I, I eat better now than I ever have before because I've been forced to be mindful. Um, but that's not a bad thing to have to be mindful about where your food comes from and where it's going and what's do, what it's doing when it gets there. These are all good things to be thinking about. Mm. And so I, I, I am far from the person that I want to be eventually by the time I leave this planet. But the one thing that has gotten me further than anything else has been going vegan. It is an absolute life in my light, mm. uh, light in my life, and um, and I hope to share some recipes with you. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, and you are so good with sharing your whatever you've magicked together out of whatever <laughs> happens to be in your produce drawer in yeah. your fridge, and then you have this wonderful joke about how you. <laughs> <laughs> you have the, you cook this amazing meal for yourself out of what are, whatever is already in your fridge, and you're like, hey everybody, look at how deprived I am as a vegan. I just feasted on this fabulous, you know, whatever was in my was in my produce drawer yeah. meal, and it was amazing. Yeah. Hashtag poor emaciated vegan. Yes. Oh wow, you've got guns. I, <laughs> I didn't realize you worked out, Henry. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't work out. I haven't. I haven't lifted a weight in 20 years, except a, 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 a 20 pound bag of, of, of a whole grain rice. <laughs> well, you're lifting that rice yeah. at least three times a week. Yeah. yeah, I love playing that game of oh, let's see what poor stray critters are at the back of the fridge, and let's find them a good home. That's my superpower, by the way. For those of you who don't know me, is posting on. Uh, as, as Camille alluded to, posting on on Facebook these recipes about what I Frankenstein together from the back of my <laughs> fridge. But it's also it's not a it's not that I have a magic fridge um, that leads to another world. Uh, oh, it is. But, <laughs> but, Narnia but, fridge. Yeah, it is an Narnia fridge. But because I built it as a Narnia fridge. Yes. So when yes. I'm going when I'm going to the store, I know that there are some there are some easy answers. Mm. Nutritional yeast is your friend. Yeah. Nutritional yes. yeast will give anything this wonderful, cheesy, umami flavor. So mm. always have nutritional yeast at the back of your fridge. And then suddenly you will have this, this, this creaminess or this cheesiness in your meal. So make sure that you're shopping um, in the right way. And yeah. then you will never, you will never have, you will never think, oh, I don't know what to do cooking or anything. I think I'll just have some chicken bread. No, just shop <laughs> intelligently and know what some of these things are that are really your friends that could become new staples. And, you know, having lentils. Um, seasoned lentils which are a, a great substitute for rice if you're trying to get mm. away from uh, too many grains they're a wonderful bed for stir fry so mm. just have a couple of these staples in your fridge have 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 interesting spices uh in, in your in your spice rack and then whatever is in the fridge is gonna is going to be able to come together and if you need some help Message me on Facebook yes. or Instagram, and I will, I will help you Frankenstein this together. <laughs> and uh, incidentally, Frankenstein 
Frankenstein's monster, that is, was a vegetarian. Frankenstein's creature. Creature, not monster. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, have you have you read The Sexual Politics of Meat? No, I have not. <gasps> You're gonna love it. Oh, You're I'm, gonna love it. I trust Carol Adams, thing. yes, definitely. Um, I, you know what? I'm gonna make a video about the sexual politics of meat. Yeah, I can even get Carol Adams to chat with me. <laughs> okay. She's an amazing vegan academic. Um, so yes, well thank you so much for chatting with me, Henry. Thank you. Always, Always a joy. A pleasure. This is our first time meeting up in person. We met four years ago when our debut middle grade novels were coming out and now here we are in LA um, celebrating bones and all at AFI tonight. Woohoo! Living the dream. Living the, I am truly living the dream and uh, thank you so much for watching and um, yeah go follow Henry on Instagram. I'll put the all the links down below. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. watching. Thank you for listening animals thank you for your kindness and your love your body thanks you the planet thanks you oh, well said all of henry's links are in the notes below this video including a fun conversation we had about kid lit and ethical veganism back in 2018. i also interviewed him for my book a bright clean mind so check that out if you want even more where this came from and a quick note for all you aspiring writers out there Henry is one of those relatively rare writers who is also a gifted and tremendously inspiring teacher. And I know this because I've taken several of his online classes and I've learned so much from him each time. So you definitely wanna hop on his mailing list and follow him on social media to find out when he's hosting upcoming workshops. We'll leave you with one of my favorite excerpts from Peace Sprout Chen, the first book. I'm not going to the Festival of Lanterns. He looks at me directly. Those luminous octopus lanterns? Their bells swarm with light and wild colors like that because the octopuses are still alive when they're being filled with hot air. Eventually, the coal under each one grows so hot it ignites the digestive gases in the animal, causing it to burst like fireworks. Entire schools are harvested and killed to supply the Perlian market during the season of glimmers. I'd assumed that he didn't eat meat because he loved animals. But it hadn't occurred to me that that would extend to the octopuses because I hadn't thought of them as animals. How tender-hearted he is to love even things that are so different from us. I knew what the lanterns were made of, I just hadn't stopped to consider the cruelty and suffering in it.